Hey there, this is Kamal. And in this video, we're going to learn about session management in PHP. So let's get this started. All right, so this is the project structure. And in here, we mainly have five files. The first one is the index.php and the second one is db.php. We also have three more files called as functions.php, logic and retrieve, which are currently empty right now. So we only have data inside the db.php and index.php. So inside the db.php, what I've done is that I've already linked to the online database. That is, I have linked to the PHP my admin. So I have given the credentials here and I have linked to that particular database. And also I have made sure that if the connection is not established, then it's going to show an error message as well. And in the index page, what I've done is that I have linked to the bootstrap CSS. And apart from that, I have created a simple form. So in that we mainly have a heading saying login. And below that we have two input tags and one button. So these two input tags are for username and password. And the last one is for login button. And I also made sure that I've given the names to each of these fields. So for input, we have username and password. And for the button, we have login. So now let's go to the browser and see what we have. Okay, so this is what we have. So you can type in the username and password, you can click on login. Now what we want to happen is that whenever we click on this, we want to take the username and password. So we want to retrieve that. So inside this, inside the project, what we're going to do is that let's go to retrieve.php and in here, let's initiate the PHP tags and take the data from the URL. Okay. So for the form, we have the post method. So we can use a dollar underscore post if you want, or you can use dollar underscore retrieve as well. And I haven't mentioned any action because you're going to submit to this exact same page. So now let's open the retrieve and type that out. So what I've done is that I'm checking in the URL whether we have login present inside that. If that is present, then you're going to take the username and password from the URL and add that to two variables called as username and password. So now that we have access to the username and password, let's go to functions.php and in here, let's type in a function to retrieve the data from the database based on a particular username. Okay, so what we're essentially doing here is that we created a function called as login and that login is going to accept three parameters. The first one is going to be the connection and that's what we had defined in the db.php. So we have a connection variable here. So we're going to take that and also we're going to take the username and password that we got from the retrieve.php and then we're going to execute a query. So the query is going to be select star from users where the username is equal to the username that we have given. And we're going to pass in the connection and a scale to the MySQL query and that's going to be executed and it's going to return us the rows. So we're going to return this. So now we need to call this function in order to execute this. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to go to logic and in here, let's call the function. Okay, so we are now checking if the URL consists of login and if that is present inside the URL, we're going to call the login function and we're going to pass in the connection, username and password. And whatever is being retrieved from this function will be assigned to variable called as results. So now we have all this logic present inside individual files. So we have to now connect all of these three files and execute that inside the index.php. So to do that, we're going to go to the top of this page and let's initiate another PHP tag and in here, let's include all the files. Okay. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to include all of these files in this exact same order. And that is because if you want to actually access this connection variable, which is present inside the db.php, then it has to be present at the top so that it is accessible by all the three remaining files. Similarly, if you want to access the values that we're using, that is the values that we're passing from the URL, then you have to make sure that this retrieve 
PHP is actually present above the functions and logic. And that's the same thing with the functions and logic as well. So if you want to execute this particular function called as login inside the logic.php, then that function has to be initiated before it is actually being called. So this function.php page has to be present above the logic.php. So when the execution starts from top to bottom, all these files will be executed in the order. So the reason why that I've divided the logic into these files is because it's a bit more organized compared to having all of this inside these two PHP tags. So having these include statements is equivalent to having all of these code present inside the two PHP tags. Okay. So now the logic is going to be something like this. So whenever you type the username and password inside these two input tags and click on login, automatically it's going to go to retrieve.php and then it's going to take the username and password from the URL and assign it to two variables called as username and password. Now these two username and password variables are accessible inside this function and the logic file. So what you're going to do is that inside the logic file, we're going to take and check if the login is present inside the URL. If it is present inside the URL, then we're going to call a function called as login. And to that login, we're going to pass in the connection variable taken from db.php and username and password taken from retrieve.php. Then inside the functions.php, we're going to take these three values and execute a particular query and get the particular record with this username. Okay. And return that. So now once that has been written, we're going to go back to logic.php and assign that to a variable called as results. And now we're going to check if the password given by the user and the password present inside the database are equal or not. So to do that, we're going to first initiate a for each loop. Okay, so one thing that I forgot to mention is that inside the database, we already have a record with a username and a hashed password. So if you don't know how to create a hashed password, it's pretty easy. You just have to type in So the syntax is password underscore hash and then you have to give the password and then you have to give it password default and that's going to generate a hash to password for you. So you can take that and place that inside this particular column. And now what we're doing is that we're essentially taking that, I mean retrieving that and then we are using a for each loop. And the reason why we're using a for each loop is because this query is going to return us multiple rows and we want only the single row which has the content. So now we're going to take that and use that as a variable called as R. Then we're going to use another function called as password verify. So for this password verify, the first parameter is going to be the password given by the user. So this is what we got inside the retrieve.php. Then the second one is going to be the password we got from the database. Okay. This is what we have. Now we're going to check that and this is going to return a Boolean value. Whether it's going to be true or false. If that is true. Okay. So now we're checking if the password check has returned true. If it has returned true, then we're going to create a variable inside the session called as username. And for that variable, we're going to pass in the variable that we have gotten from the database. So the username present inside the session will be assigned the value we got from the database. So this is the syntax for that. So now the session variable has been created. So now what we want to happen is that we, we want to access this variable inside every other page present inside our project. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is that you're going to go to the index page, which is the root page. So in this, at the top, you can type in session underscore start. That is going to enable session variables inside the whole project. So now we have access to the session variables everywhere inside the project. So now if we want, we can echo that out here. So let's echo that out here. Echo session username, save that and go to this refresh. So the username is not defined because we haven't tried to log in as of yet. So let's type in Kamal and the password is going to be admin. Click on login. So now as you can see, Kamal has been printed. So that session variable has been assigned. So now using the session variables, you can do multiple things. So let's say we want this form to be visible only if the user has not logged in. If the user has logged in, we want to actually show a message saying hello Kamal and also a logout button as well. So for that, what you're going to do is that below this, let's type in 
So for that, let's go to the bottom and let's create another container. And let's type in the message that we want to be displayed. So let's save that and go to the browser and refresh. Okay, so now we have the message and we have the button. So now we want this to be visible only when the user is logged in, this has to become hidden. So the way that we achieve that is we're gonna type in a if condition. So the logic that we have implemented is that we have divided an if condition here in between these two tags and what we've done is that we're checking if the session variable is empty or not. If it is empty, that means the user has not logged in, then this should be visible. But if the session variable is not empty, since we have an exclamation mark here, if it is not empty, then this should be visible. Okay. So if I save that and go to the browser and refresh, so as you can see here, that form has become hidden and also my name is visible here and that is because inside the h3 tag we have the session variable being printed out so now what we want to happen is that when we click on this logout button automatically a particular function has to execute and the session variable has to be destroyed so let's go to the code once again and right now what we want to happen is that let's go to the logic and here let's check if the url contains a logic called as logout So what we're trying to do is that we are checking if the URL consists of a value called as logout. If that is present, we want to destroy the session. And this is the function used to destroy the session. So before doing that, let's go back and for this logout button, let's give a name property and the name property is going to be logout. So now let's go to the browser and refresh and let's click on logout. And as you can see here, even though we have been logged out, the browser is not being refreshed. So if I go to the browser and click on enter, so as you can see, that has been removed and the form is now visible. And that is because the session variable is destroyed. But since the web page is not being refreshed, what we want to do is that after the session has been destroyed, we have to redirect to the main page, that is index page. So we've given a header and the location for the header is gonna be the root, that is slash. And then we want to exit out of the if condition. So let's save that, go to the browser and refresh. Now let's type in Kamal and let's type in the password admin and let's click on login. And if I click on logout now, we are going to go back to the index page. So since the session variables are active, so if I log in once again and if I close this off and go back to it once again, so as you can see here, the session is still active. So even if I close off the tab, the session is going to be remain active. But if I close off the browser, then the session will automatically get destroyed. So if you don't want that to happen, what you have to do is that you have to use cookies and you have to store the data inside of cookies instead of sessions. Okay, so if you want to do that, you can do that as well. So that's how you implement session management inside of PHP. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.